Hello, my name is Mike Ward. I'm the Global Director of Content at Informal Farmer Intelligence, the publishers of Pink Sheet, Script, InVivo and Generics Bulletin. We're here in Amsterdam at Bio Europe Spring where you know, various stakeholders in the sort of life sciences space, pharma, biotech, uh, even investors, get together to discuss progress and also establish conversations that could lead to to deal making, etc. I'm joined by uh, Sean Marat, who's uh, Chief Operating Officer at BioNTech, a German biotech company. So, Sean, uh, welcome. Thank you. Uh, the last time we, well, since the last time we spoke, uh, you guys raised $270 million at the end of last year, which uh, is a pretty sizable sort of venture financing. What was it you told investors they could expect? to get it, you know, with that money? Yeah, so uh, we're investing the money and what we told investors was we were investing money in our continued development of our pipeline. Yeah. And of course, as you know, with individualized immunotherapy, uh, manufacturing is important. And yeah. so we will continue to invest quite significantly in manufacturing to support those single batches per patient, which is part of the business model. So, 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 what, what does sort of the you know the pipeline look like at the moment, and, mm -hmm. and you know what what what's the sort of the timeline? What 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 are the sort of the milestones we can expect to to hear from uh, BioNTech oh, from this BioNTech. year? Yeah, so uh, so at the moment we've got um, we've got uh, four trials of uh, four programs in clinical development. Uh, probably the the most um, uh, uh, visible is. Uh, the Genentech collaboration yeah. with us where we have a, uh, a trial across multiple cancer types where we're testing uh, our individualized neoepitope vaccine in combination with, uh, with T-Centric which is a pdl one right. inhibitor. So that's about a, a 500, 550 patient uh, trial across many different cancers. And, and Genentech's actually that they're running that trial or are you doing it in collaboration? We're doing it in collaboration. The Genentech do much of the heavy lifting because right. uh, a lot of the testing is in the United States, right. okay. where of course Genentech is uh, yeah. predominant. Okay, and, and the other programs? So we have, um, so we have um, uh, a, a phase one, phase two uh, of an intravenous formulation of so-called shared antigens. These are, uh, expressed across uh, patients in different in the same cancer, uh, and uh, that's running pretty well. We presented some of the data, very early data at J.P. Morgan conference, and we'll continue to invest in that program. We started a um, uh, head and neck cancer vaccine uh, trial uh, against uh, papilloma, common papilloma virus uh, antigens. Uh, we, um, we are uh, starting a, in Q3 of this year, which is additional, we will be starting a program with Sanofi. And the feature of that is that we, we started that program two years ago uh, from a piece of paper. And so we're, we're going to be in the clinic with Sanofi this year, which is quite pleased that that particular yeah. partner. Yeah. Uh, we then have a, a breast cancer a program that we are running in Europe. Oh, you remember I just said with Genentech, they're doing most of the heavy lifting. Yeah. One, of the, one of the trials that we're, man, we're conducting is the breast cancer trial. But we're also going to be doing a so-called warehouse share, ha, shared antigen uh, trial right. uh, later this year. So that's, so that's, uh, that's, that's the four plus an office five. Uh, and uh, we will be adding ad an additional program this year, so a total of six. Uh, and that's coming from your own internal engine? All, all internal, and, uh, and the features of the programs I just described is that they're mRNA-based programs. Um, as you know, we have different platforms, uh, really, um, to allow us to, to pick the right program for the right yeah. patient, the right treatment for the right patient. So we, we have bispecific antibody platform with um, which uh, where we have a program with GenMap yeah. and that's coming into the clinic next year. We have our own CAR-T program from our CAR-T platform that's coming into the clinic next year yeah. against ovarian cancer. 
Uh, we have a small molecule program coming into the clinic next year, TLR7, and we have, um, we have what we call uh, ribomavs, which is mRNA encoding uh, by specific antibodies. And the great thing about that is you get the body to produce the antibody, so all of this cell line development and, yeah. and uh, purification requirement you don't need. Right, because of course you know, the, the, the whole oncology space is extraordinarily crowded at the yeah. moment. So it, 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 those are the sort of the differentiators. That's what makes the you know, Beyond Tech different from the the other players. I think it's this. I think it's this, uh, and it's you know gaining ground now every year is this precision medicine approach yeah. because you know, it doesn't matter whether you look at regulators or uh, collaborators or the doctors and patients themselves. Everyone wants a precise medicine for their disease and that is our differentiator but we're agnostic as to the as to the type of technology we use to deliver that and that's why we have these different approaches. So, so, so um, I mean a lot of the approaches that you just talked about in your in you know, the platforms you have were generated in-house that 270 million dollars is any of that going to be spent acquiring you know bringing in sort of assets from elsewhere yes there most certainly I mean I think that um, you always see innovation across uh, the business whether it's other biotechs or universities yeah. and and we're looking for complementary technologies just to strengthen what we already already have and there's 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 a, there's a lot of interesting stuff out there right. yeah so what, what what sort of assets specifically are you oh, I think this for? year I think this year we, we we're looking to strengthen our TCR right. technologies yeah. um, uh, we have, of course, the complete manufacturing for CAR T TCRs in house. So, Autologous is again uh, single patient batch manufacturing, uh, like our Neo Epitope manufacturing. Uh, so, we're, we're really looking to strengthen some of the uh, some of the technologies around that to become more efficient at producing these T cells and CAR Ts just quicker. And. Uh I mean, the, the BioNTech model is to, you know, develop into a fully fledged, um, fully integrated uh, biotech company. Yeah. Um, sort of, you know, the classic old model. Uh, what are you doing about sort of, you know, the commercialization arm? I mean, are you, are you beginning to ramp that up? I mean, you're still, obviously, in early stages of clinical trials. Yeah. I mean, I think the thing about. Um uh, oncology and immuno oncology is if you see a signal you can you can jump very quickly into registration trials I mean and, and you see good examples of that across the the industry um, so you know we expect to see uh, uh, signals from our programs over the next few years um, and uh, it won't be very long then until we have to have a commercial organization. So we're starting this year, actually. We're starting to build it slowly this year, and it will accelerate next year. OK. Uh, and, and are you going to be, I mean, you, sort of, you talked about how agnostic you were earlier on. What, what about the, the geographical commercialization strategy? Are you going to be agnostic there, or are you going to be European and, and look Europe. for partners elsewhere else? Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, most of our deals are 50-50s um, because you, you just have a different level of influence with your partner yeah. if you're paying 50 cents in every dollar of the development. Yeah. And through that, we have uh, co-promotion rights in Europe and the United States. I think with, with those programs, um, they probably will hit the market first, so we'll do the classic learn from the partners and then bring our own stuff behind. But, you know, as I say, um, we need to get ready for that um, pretty much uh, at the end of this year. Okay. So we're starting to strengthen that function. Great. Well, Sean, th thanks very much for, for, for stopping by. Yeah, pleasure, pleasure as always.